Hello everyone, Mr. Science Mover here. Today I'm going to tell you a story about my time speedrunning a game you may recognize called Pixel Strike 3D. On the surface, Pixel Strike 3D is a first person shooter with a voxel art style. And for most of the game that's true, but speedrunners will always find a way to speedrun any game. And in Pixel Strike 3D, the leaderboards show themselves in the form of Death Run. Death Run is a genre of game that existed way before Pixel Strike 3D. You can find them in Minecraft, Roblox, heck, you could even consider TV shows like American Ninja Warrior and Wipeout Death Runs, minus the actual death. But in Pixel Strike 3D, this is where speedrunners, including myself, chose to show their prowess. Pixel Strike 3D Death Run features five different maps. Ancient Pyramid, Skyrun, Museum, Nexus, and Cube World. Each of these has its own leaderboard on speedrun.com. You'll also notice that there's a category split between any percent and glitchless. This split has been around since before my days of speedrunning, but back then, only the glitchless category was displayed on the homepage. This fact would become a whole lot more controversial when I came onto the scene. Our story begins in the first map I decided to run, Museum. The Museum route was the most interesting to me for two reasons. The first was that at the time, Museum was the only run with a major difference between any percent and glitchless. The level features a large acid pool covering most of the Museum floor, forcing runners to jump along the benches placed across it. But, someone discovered that it was possible, but difficult, to actually jump on the acid if you manage to jump right before you die. Doing this jump would classify the run as an any percent run. This was incredibly difficult, so that brings me to the second reason I focused on this level first. Both categories featured in the middle of the level a jump up a few boxes that seemed inconspicuous at first. The world record strategy was to just spam jump and you would make it, but I could not for the life of me get it consistent. It was as if this specific jump had something more to it, as I just wasn't getting the amount of height the world record holder was getting. After getting accustomed to speedrunning a level for a bit, the major pain point was still the obvious one, that being the box jump, so I set out to make it more consistent. I sat there for a while just trying different jump angles and jump timings. I found that it was impossible to make the jump with a single spacebar press, but it was possible to make while spamming jump, like the world record did, and it was also possible if you jumped and then jumped again afterwards. I was curious, what could be happening here? Why would spamming jump or jumping before hitting the ground give you extra height? And that's when it hit me. The box jump and the acid jump were the same jump. Allow me to explain. In most games, you cannot jump again after a jump until you've touched the floor. Sounds simple enough. But actually checking for character collision with the floor is difficult. In fact, games still haven't entirely solved this problem to this day. The problem is that collision checks can only be computed so fast. In the real world, there's no computer that needs to calculate collision. It just happens. But in a video game, you need to spend CPU power to compute that each frame. As a result, your physics calculation can only get as accurate as your computer can run them. So we're left with an approximation. In Pixel Strike 3D, instead of finding the exact instant a player touches the floor, the game uses a heuristic to approximate it. By using a thin invisible trigger right below the player's feet, the game can know that if the collider is touching the floor, the player is grounded and can jump again. This allows the game to simplify its calculations by checking for an overlap instead of having to check the first frame of collision. The problem here is that Pixel Strike 3D's invisible jump trigger is unreasonably tall. With respect to the player, it's about this tall. So when a player jumps from the real ground, it can only reach this height. But if a player manages to jump while the trigger is still in the ground, they can jump a second time from higher up but with the same jump height meaning they can jump a tiny bit higher in total. This invisible jump trigger is the root of both of our jumps here. You can jump off the acid because the acid is actually shorter than the jump trigger, which allows you to jump before your real feet collide with the acid. You can make the box jump because of the extra height you gain from the jump collider, either by spamming two jumps in succession, or by timing a second one right before you hit the ground like in the acid example. This knowledge unlocked so much potential for me, but the double jump as I would coin it, was still very difficult to pull off. So difficult, in fact, that it had only been previously seen in one level. But surely a not only a higher but also longer jump could be useful pretty much everywhere if it could be made consistent. All of a sudden, hard jumps would become trivial, and previously impossible jumps would become possible. At first, I set about spamming my spacebar at every jump to see where it would get me, but it tired me out pretty quickly. I had a thought, though. Other speedrun games, especially those made in Source, would bind scroll wheel to jump in order to maintain full speed bunny hops. This felt like an identical situation, jumping as soon as possible before you hit the ground. 
Pixel Strike 3D does have a key rebind menu, but it doesn't allow you to map jump to scroll. Thus, this would require an external program. Whether that was the right way to go or not was not really up to me, so I asked the moderator of the leaderboard if I could. He responded that he was surprised you couldn't do that already in game, but that as long as the rebind was 1 to 1 input, it would be fine. That was my ticket, and I set to work. And I broke the game apart. With my new higher longer jump, I could clear gaps that were simply impossible before. And after ticking a few world records, I became suspicious to the community. Was I actually cheating to gain an advantage? The community knew for a fact that these jumps weren't possible, and for what it's worth, they were actually correct. These jumps were not possible with single jumps, but nobody knew yet the power of the double jump. Of course, I was not being secret about this knowledge, and when the world record holder, we'll call him Tim, asked me how I was jumping so far, I gave him a detailed, straightforward explanation of the mechanic, as well as the remapper I was using to execute the jumps. He seemed satisfied with my explanation and the moderator's confirmation that it was fair game, and then ended up using my strategy to beat some of my times by just rounding corners tighter. Meanwhile though, most of the community didn't know how I was doing this. It's not like I was hiding it, but the information was relayed over Discord, where not everyone who was competing was actively reading everything that was written. Soon however, I received an aggressive DM from the speedrun.com leaderboard admin we'll call Jay. Jay's message was plain and simple. Prove to me you're not cheating, or you're banned. I was baffled by this, as he was also the Discord owner, and my explanation was sitting right there. So I directed him to the explanation, and the moderator's comment about the remapper, and after managing to replicate the jump himself, he declared that the double jump would be allowed. However, this is where our story takes a turn for the worse. Jay had allowed the double jump to only be used in any percent, as he deemed it to be a glitch. Remember earlier how I said the categories were split into any percent and glitchless? Well now that the acid jump and the box jump were known to be a product of the same faulty collision system, Jay decided that neither would be allowed in the glitchless category. This didn't sit well with the community, as now even runners who did the box jump normally would not be allowed to place their runs on the main leaderboard, effectively clearing out the entire category and making Jay the de facto world record holder without the box jump. And not only that, but Jay would go back and vet every single other world record, none of which were held by him, and remove any that included jumps that he deemed suspicious. What was a suspicious jump, you might ask? Well, it was any jump that Jay could not replicate himself. That was it. If you could beat Jay in a glitchless category, he would simply deem your run glitched and place you in the any percent category. Thus, Jay maintained world records in every single glitchless run, not because he was good, but by a technicality that there was no way to prove someone hadn't accidentally jumped too soon before hitting the ground. This was absurd to every single other member of the community, including the other moderators. Some of these jumps had even been done by people legitimately before the double jump was discovered. But because Jay couldn't do them, they were not valid for the glitchless category. And to add fuel to the fire, Jay went ahead and removed the other moderators of the game on speedrun.com for disagreeing with him and quote unquote, refusing to enforce the rules. This turned what should have been a Pixel Strike 3D speedrunning renaissance into a dark age of the leaderboard showing nothing but Jay world records, with no possible way to compete. He was the sole leaderboard admin and no one had the power to dethrone him. And it's important to note that none of these runs were actually world records. It's just that the runs that beat him were relegated to the any percent category, which did not display on the homepage. This could have ended poorly for the Pixel Strike 3D speedrunning community, but fortunately the admins of speedrun.com itself came to the rescue. After Tim and I explained the situation to them, and seeing the logs of runs being recategorized and moderators being demoted, they agreed that we needed a new head admin if this community were to survive. They needed someone who'd been around in the community for a long time and knew the game well, but would not be biased in their judgement, and so they picked the previous world record holder Tim to be the new admin. And the people rejoiced. The community came together and nearly unanimously agreed that not only was a double jump not a glitch, but that binding jump to scroll was to be allowed. Previous glitchless world records were reinstated, and Jay slid down to 3rd, 4th, 5th, and who knows what place. He just couldn't keep up with the progressing skill of the community, and in the end, his hubris was his undoing. For it's likely that if this had not happened out in the open directly on speedrun.com, the admins there would not have paid us any attention. Today, Pixel Strike 3D world records have progressed far beyond anything we could have imagined. Our leaderboard is now equipped to display many more records than before, and we even found an actual glitch in Skyrun, where you can trigger checkpoints out of order to start the level from checkpoint 2 and save a bunch of time. 
I hope this was entertaining and if you enjoy speedrunning or Pixel Strike 3D, I would definitely recommend trying out this game speedrun. It's free and it's fun. What more could you ask for? Anyway, thanks for listening and I'll see you guys next time.